Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so once you have the miniature primed, I've just gone with a zenithal highlight prime here. Um, we can start off with our first color. So starting off with our first color is going to be Barbarian Flesh. And this is, of course, is going to be just on the... Uh, standard bearer himself is this Celt standard bearer. We're not going to be focusing on the little head that he is carrying with that um, person he's decapitated. We just want to focus on the actual standard bearer's skin itself. Then once we have that skin all painted up, we can now come in with some cobalt skin, which of course is a way lighter colored skin. So that's what we're going to be using for our severed head that we've got on here. We want it to look like a lot of the uh, blood and everything has run out of this decapitated guy's head and the best way to do that is to use a lighter skin tone and really make it look like it's a lot paler and has no blood in it and as you can see with those two skin colors we've got a big difference in the two heads there and make them stand out from one another and then once we've done that we're going to come in with our black gray and all I'm going to be doing with the black gray is I'm just going to be painting in our standard bearers hair and facial hair so we're not going to focus on the head that he has in his hand it's just going to be on the standard bearer himself then once we have that painted up, we're going to come in now with some Cavalry Brown. And this is what we're going to be doing with our severed head guy here. We're going to be going with a nice sort of red head slash brown uh, hair colored person. So we've definitely got those two stark contrasts and colors between the two heads. So they're going to really stand out and you're going to notice it once the piece is complete. So just coming in now with a small fine tip brush and getting all that hair that he's grasping in his hand. Then now we've got those two heads complete, we're going to come in now with some khaki. And all I'm going to be doing with the khaki is we're just going to be painting in the uh, pants of our standard bearer here. It's just a nice sort of neutral tone and colour for the pants. Nothing fancy here. We want to make it look uh, reasonably realistic. So just going with a nice neutral colour for the pants. And of course making sure that we thin down our paint when we do this. So we can take full advantage on that zenithal highlight that we've already applied to the miniature. Then once we've painted in those pants, we're going to come in now with some mahogany brown. And with the mahogany brown, all we're going to do is we're going to be painting the big, nice uh, staff or that our standard bearer is wearing here. I shouldn't say wearing, that he's holding, rather, um, with that nice big symbol on the end of it. Or, you know, the display piece, as it were, um, to show that he is the standard bearer and he's representing the pride of his people. Then once we have that completed, we're going to come in now with some dark stone. And all we're going to be doing with this dark stone is we're just going to be painting in the boots here. So a nice, quick, easy coverage of our dark stone, being careful to avoid getting it anywhere we don't want it. But remember, we don't have to worry about that too much at this stage because we're still in the base coating step. So you can be a little bit more carefree with it than you need to. Then with those boots painted up, we can come in now with some gun metal. Now there isn't a whole lot of metal on this miniature, but he is wearing a chainmail shirt, so we want to make sure we get that nice and uh, covered in there. Remember, thinning down your paints metallic can be a little bit globby here, especially how I've got it on mine, I've got it a little bit too globby. So I'm just going to be spreading it around a little bit more, really sort of getting it thinned out so we can get a lot of that detail in, so we can see all those nice uh, chain links in the actual chainmail itself. Then now with this chainmail painted up, we're going to come in now with just some deck tan. And all we're going to be doing with the deck tab is we're going to be painting his uh, undershirt that he's wearing here. So he, it's basically just the sleeves and there's a very small trim along the underneath of the chain mail as well. You want to make sure you get that in there, a very thin line. So uh, if you need to, switch to a smaller brush just so you can just pick out that area as well. And then once we have that complete, what I'm going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some oak brown. And we're going to be using oak brown to be painting the leather straps and the scabbards of our uh, weapons here. And of course the big belt along his chest. So we just want to come in with a nice fine tip brush. Really get in there since some of these uh, areas go underneath other places as well. So be aware of that as you're painting it up. Then once we have that leather painted up we can now come in with a nice big part of the miniature. I'm going to use bright green to do this. And we're going to use... It to of course be painting up the cloak of our 
Celt Standard Bearer here. It's going to be a nice, bright, bold, dynamic color on the piece. It's going to really help it stand out on the tabletop. So it's a nice way to really get that extra pop on a nice big area of the model. Now this may look a little bit too uh, bright and crazy for you, but don't worry. We're going to uh, dull it down with a bit of wash and it's going to really help uh, the piece uh, look a little bit more natural while still having those nice bold colors that we want to have so we can show it out on the tabletop. Then once we have that nice cloak complete, we're going to come in now with some weapon bronze. And we're going to be using this to add in a bit of flair to some of the pieces of the miniature. So we're going to be painting areas like the handle of the nice sword he has prominently. We also want to be using the weapon bronze to be painting the little clip that's holding his cloak together. And of course we want to use it to paint the uh, nice bore that he has on the end of his uh, pole. So he's showing off his sort of clan symbol that he's got here as well. Since it's going to be a nice sort of like bronze statue on the end of this pole. And then once we have those bits of style complete, we're going to come in now with our washing step and starting off with some flesh wash. And all we're going to be doing is, of course, applying this over all of the skin areas of our miniature. And don't forget, we also have two faces on this miniature. So don't forget the one grasping in his hand. And I'm also going to be doing the hair as well, since his hair is a red color. And the flesh wash has a bit of red tint into it as well, so it's going to help uh, enrich that color as well. Then once we have that red wash complete, we're going to now come in with some Nuln Oil. And for our Nuln Oil, we're going to be placing it over the metallic areas. So over our nice uh, chainmail shirt that he's wearing, as well as the um, pieces of, what do you call it, the weapon bronze that we have there, the little stand out bits on our miniature we're also going to be applying our own oil to that as well so don't forget about those little pieces as you're doing the chain shirt then once that known oil is all dry we're going to come in now with some agrax earth shade and this is going to be pretty much applied to the rest of the model where we haven't applied any wash so we want to be doing it to the boots the pants of course the uh, nice green cloak that he's wearing uh, being a little bit more careful on the cloak we don't want to muddy it up too much but we want that nice uh, brown color to sort of dull down how bright our green is and give it that more gritty realism uh, look as well and also don't forget the pole that's holding up his nice uh, bronze statue of his clan as well so uh, it's all about just applying it nice and evenly and making sure it doesn't pull in the recesses especially on the back of the cloak there's a lot of areas where it can potentially pull so just keep an eye on it as it's drying as well then once we have that completely dried up, we can start on with our highlighting step. And then we're going to start off with some barbarian flesh. And all we're going to be doing is hitting those nice high points. So we've got some nice uh, fingers sculpted into the miniature. So we just want to be running it along the top, being very careful not to get it in any areas you don't want it to. And then of course we want to be hitting areas like the top of the eyebrow, the nose, and the top of the cheekbone as well. Then once we have that skin picked out, we're going to come in now with some deck tan. Doing the exact same thing again, trying to hit those high points. Um, you can see that there's a lot of uh, sort of mini folds and details sculpted into it. So it's not too bad to see where you want to have those highlights placed in. And you can see I'm running it along the edge of my brush rather than the tip of my brush. So I can really uh, get a little bit smoother line, especially in that area just underneath the chain shirt. Then once we have that shirt picked out, we're going to come again in with some khaki. And again, of course, just placing the highlights onto the raised areas of his pants here. And there's actually some nice uh, flow folds and curves into the actual piece itself. So you can get a pretty decent idea of where you want those highlights to be. And you can see I'm being a little uh, rough with my highlighting. I'm not trying to go for smooth lines here. I'm going for very like rough, quick lines to try and add a little bit of texture into the pants themselves. Then once we have those pants picked out with highlights, we're going to come in now with some cobalt skin. And all we're going to do is the exact same step that we applied to the face of his, our standard bearer we got here. But this time we're just doing it with the severed head. Just picking out the tops of the eyebrows, the nose, and all those little areas that are going to be catching the light on there too. So being careful, we can see I've got a very thin tip on the edge of my brush and just carefully picking them out. Then once we have that complete, we're going to come back in now with some... Uh, bright green from uh, Vallejo here so we can uh, carry on with our cloak that we want here and we want to of course add in that pop of color since it's a nice big prominent color on our miniature and we've got these very very nice uh, 
flows and folds into the cloak itself. So it's going to be nice and easy to really pick out the uh, high points on the miniature itself. And you can see I'm running my brush along the edges so I can really get a nice smooth line on there. Make it look like the light is shining off those places that we want it to. Then once we have that cloak complete, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be using some weapon bronze and some gun metal. Just mixing a little bit in together with each other to really try to brighten up that weapon bronze. And hitting the high points of the uh, miniature where the bronze is hitting. So we've got that little bit of silver glint in it and hopefully try and make it like it's br glowing bright in the sunlight. And as well as that, we also want to be going over the chainmail shirt itself with a quick little mini dry brush as well so we can get those raised bits of detail and then for one last little effect on the miniature that i'm going to have here i'm going to come in with some glistening blood now this is after i've applied the base which is just a standard base uh, with stones from my driveway painted up and with a little bit of grass flocking on there as i'm going to come in with of course as you've seen here this blood effect that we've got just placing a little bit on the ground and he has a little bit of like uh, blood coming out of his mouth in there as well so just painting a little bit in there and to really give it that effect like he's just recently killed this man and pulling up his staff with his clan symbol to really show off the power and dominance that he has on the battlefield. And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up our Celt Standard Bearer from the Hail Caesars Miniatures game by Warlord Games. So I hope this has been useful for you guys, whether you want to follow along or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. I'd like to thank you all again for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.